it's not the payment that's the issue you need to say go along the lines of this is objection handling this isn't this, this isn't really payment it, you need to address it and say look um genuinely when, generally when people say that they want to look over it it's because they don't yet see the value in it or they're not sure that they will be guaranteed the outcome which one is it and so you force them to make a decision as opposed to oh yeah no worries or I'll ask my partner or whatever yeah the other thing is pre-framing at the start of the conversation you need to say because people use partners as excuses all the time you need to say um I want to make this is going to be a a big decision and and, you know we make sure that we look after people long term so is there anyone who you would be looking to um discuss the decision making process with um to move forward with this today and so you preface you want an answer today and you preface is there someone else and they say, oh, yeah, I'm going to talk to my partner about it, like, when I get home. And you say, great. Um, we actually want to make sure that your partner's involved in this because if they're part of the decision-making process um, and you're not the one able to say yes or no today, it's actually really confusing you trying to relay what we're talking about. And I want to make sure that they're on the same page as you. So what we're going to do is actually book another call at a time when your partner and you can both be present for this because um, we really take this quite um, seriously and we want to make sure that this is a really good option for you and there's no confusion in that transfer of information. Um, And you literally just cut it and you don't even, and they go, oh no, it's fine, like whatever. And then you say, look, um, you know, it's just part of making sure that you're totally being looked after because the last thing I want to do is go through all of this with you and then your partner not be able to make an informed decision with you and you're trying to sell it to them because you're on board, but they're not. Um, and we've unfortunately had that happen before um, where the person's really wanted to do it, um, but their partner hasn't really understood the depths of it. And so that's why we make sure the partner's there for that conversation. For sure. So even when I definitely hear you, yeah. Um, and with, um, like I've even got a, a pre sort of assessment call form, mm-hmm. uh, with, with those questions on there in regards to, do you need anyone to be present within the assessment call? Right. And is I that, had, is that I, what the question says? Yes. I wouldn't say, do you need anyone? I would say, yeah. is there anyone who's a part of the decision-making process um, yep. That you would that you um, would want to discuss this with before making oh. a decision, and then below it you say it is imperative that um, this person is on the call. If they aren't, please be aware you will be asked to reschedule the call at a time that both of you can attend. Yep. Because then it's an already, you've just written it. It's already out there. It's a non-negotiable. And so you say, hey, I just wanted to confirm today before we jump in, is if there was anyone, I know you, you said in your form that you said your partner was there and I was just wondering where he is today. Yeah. Um. So you just don't pass go collect $200 because it just fucks everything over going through 45 minutes and then someone's partner goes, oh, I don't want you to spend $300. Well, um, absolutely. And it's sort of like I've, I've had that, the situation where it's come up and it's sort of like even though they have said I don't need I can make the decision myself um as a as an answer um they have still sort of at the end of the 45 minute call um you know uh I I need to go home and and chat to my partner about it and then what did you say that's where I get tripped up and um, I sort of, I just stumble and I just, instead of forcing it, I've just sort of backed off and said, okay, well, um, I will essentially, I'll hear back if we can, can we get this sorted by tomorrow? Okay. I would say, look, I know in your form, you said that you were the one who was involved in the decision-making process. Usually when people then say that they want to talk to a partner, it's actually because they don't feel confident that the program's right for them. I'm just wondering what you're lacking confidence on to make this decision yourself, like you mentioned in the form. And you just throw it back on them. Or you say something like, look, can I just play devil's advocate for a second? What if your partner says no? What do we do then? How do you build the confidence, the strength, the pain, relief, the whatever in your life without using this program? And you get them to say, holy fuck, I need this. Yeah. Um, you can go about 
taking deposits um, because people who pay once are more likely to pay again. So it can just be a thing where like if you take someone um, like a $50, $100 deposit, um, they're going to reach out to you oh. um, again to, to reconvene and they're more likely to say yes if they've paid then and there. Um, it's um yeah no definitely something I, that i've um that i have struggled with and um just articulating uh those things in in those certain situations um face to face i suppose but uh you know um confronting but that's the thing right like you're there to support them to make sure that they don't delay on their health and that's the approach that you take with it it's not you fucking need to give me your money today. It's look, how many times have you said before, what else is showing up in your life where you've said, I need to think about it. And then you've talked yourself out of it, or you have allowed yeah. someone else to talk you out what you've just told me. Um, I'm the person for you because of X, Y, Z, and this is going to be great for you. And you absolutely need the accountability and you've talked yourself out of shit before. And you've gone around in circles. Like, why are you going to, this is not going to be any different unless you actually make a change. And if you like, you know, it, it might be a conversation of, you know, if I can just give you some coaching advice before we actually, you know, commence this, it's that it's the, the first piece of coaching advice is that I'm here to actually hold you accountable for this stuff. I'm not yeah. here to walk, let you say no to yourself, let you put your kids first, let you do all these things that you have been doing that's actually gotten you to where you are. And if you continue to make the same continual decisions and behaviors, you're going to be not only in the same spot, but actually based on your pain and whatever, you're probably going to be worse. And I'm not saying that to scare you or to th or anything like that. I'm saying that because I've seen people in your exact position and that's what's happened. And I really am here to hold, um, hold, you know, ho hold highly of you and support you because you came in for a reason and you didn't come in here to waste your time or my time. And I know that. You came in here because you were looking for a solution and for someone to actually fucking hold you accountable to this shit so we can actually get a result. Yeah. And I think that would come across a lot better than just backing out on them because they continue to fucking back out on themselves. Treat it like either a partner or, you know, a parent or, or someone who you hold dearly that you see could actually go one of two ways in their life. Yeah. try to try to draw from those feelings as opposed to like oh well you need to fucking pay me money or don't be stupid or whatever um, because people buy from emotion and if you hit them with all this logical shit you're like oh dollars don't have it can't afford it can't figure it out into my schedule and it's like you can't afford not to What's the downside? Mm. What do you lose if you don't do this? Talk to me about the feelings and the, you know, how does that change your life? And hopefully in the preamble, you've talked about like why it's important, why they need it. And then you reverse that and you say, okay, well, we want to feel confident. We want to feel kick ass. But you told me right now, you feel a bit flabby. You, you know, you feel uncomfortable in your body. You've got pain every single day. You can't go to the gym. You can't play with your kids. What happens if we do nothing? And like, let them, like, just let them sit in that feeling. Yeah. And sometimes I actually like found that for a period of time when I was really nailing this in quite a lot of different calls in a row, we'd yeah. have a lot of people who would actually cry because it's actually a lot, but you, but, and it's not manipulation, but it's allowing them oh, to yes. really, like pull the shades off and go, fuck, I've really fucked up and I need to make a change. I don't want to buy into people's excuses anymore. Like no. I want for for myself. But you also don't want let, to let them continue to buy into their own excuses. More importantly, like absolutely exactly. for you, and it's going to play out in what you do as well. But it's yeah. also for them. For them also, one hundred percent. Yeah. Like I would just imagine, like if if you've ever had a client who was on the fence, and they ended up saying yes. And their life went fucking like this. Think about that person every single time you have one of these conversations. Because I remember someone who, his name's Keith. He's been with us for fucking ever. But he almost didn't resign for his second year with us. And I fucking worked so hard to be like, you need this. Like, what do you, who are you, like, what are you going to do if you don't do this? And I like, I spent 
probably a week going back and forth with him being like, dude, like this is not. And now he's in our mastermind, like highest level program. And he makes $16,000 a week. Like, and he's like, I was, and now he's the biggest fan because he was, he was almost off the fence. And I was like, no, come this way. And then his life went like this. But if we don't fight for those people who are trying to fight for themselves a little bit, but don't yet have the resilience or the grit or whatever that we do, then they just peter off the other side and fall into the abyss. That's um, yeah, that's, that's really, really powerful. And and I think it's going to help me a lot. Um, And it's just allowing, allowing that space to, to happen instead of backing myself off um and and being with them through that journey and guiding them through that's you your know, goal. The, the process and, and what we're trying to achieve yeah and it's it's exactly it's what we're trying to achieve it's a we it's a combined it's we're together on this i'm here to support you it's not it's not a distant thing it's like i'm tapping into this too and i've spent the last 45 minutes getting to know you and i really appreciate the vulnerability that you've had with me and I want to make sure that this isn't just a wasted 45 minutes and you keep going and searching for other scenarios. Yep. Um, and I want to know if there's a way that we can make this work for you um, and sort of attack it from, from that angle. Um, and the thing is, the $199 movement assessment is not locking in for them for six months. It's that no. is step one. Um it's just- and it's, just, and it's creating clarity and that in itself has to be valuable enough yeah. because otherwise people might be nervous. People might pay a hundred dollars for it, but they might not see, or you might not have articulated the, the value of the movement assessment in isolation because people mm. don't think 199 movement assessment, they hear six months for $3,000 or whatever. Yeah. And so they go off, oh, I'm not going to do this if I can't do that. And so it's about, obviously this is the first step of the process, but I need to make sure that I can help you. We feel comfortable with each other. And, and this is making sure that you've got some clarity and we can open your eyes. And, you know, even if it isn't right for you, that's your opportunity to really set your baseline, figure out where to. Sure. From here. 